G5 Jeff TV. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the share button as you come on in. I got the VP of operations back in the building. VP Shane, what's going on, bro? Everything's good. Yo, we got a special one today, and this is something that's not being reported, and a lot of people are not talking about it, which is absolutely crazy. But one of the best 175 pounders in the world, Alexander Volzdick has retired from the sport of boxing at the age of 33. Um, his last fight was in my hometown of Philly uh, against Arthur Viterbiev. And he lost by stoppage. Uh, people don't know he had to go to the hospital after that. And I don't think he got out the hospital till maybe 24, 48 hours later. Now, we got VP Shane on the line. A lot of people don't know why Alexander Vuzdik has retired, but VP Shane has some basically insider information on why he retired. So, VP Shane, you got the floor. I mean, firstly, I mean, Vuzdik is a one of my favorite fighters. He's a fighter I've followed for a while, and I feel like it's, it's I mean, it's a it's quite ironic that Vuzdik has a very good connection with the channel as well because. That was the first fight you attended, like first mainstream fight you attended as yes. media. So yes. to me, that's a, you know, that's quite significant in that sense. But yeah. obviously, it's even more depressing when you look at it and you go, even though he lost, he still showed that he has good talent. You know, he's one of the most skillful fighters in this division, definitely top fighter. He's been in really good fights in his career um 175 and as an amateur so it's disappointing that um he's retired but i feel like one thing you need to understand is in eastern europe i live in europe so i would obviously understand but in eastern europe the olympics is the clinical for fighters um like i've spoken to many eastern european fighters and i've also been to eastern europe and Eastern Europe, they see Olympics as bigger than winning a world title. So if you get a gold medal, it's more than winning a world title because you're winning a gold medal for your country. When you're a world champion, you're a world champion, right. not Russia or Ukraine or not Latvia or whatever country you're representing. You are the world champion, right. not the country. So when you you go to the Olympics and represent your country and you come back with a medal like Volt's done in 2012, he's reached his pinnacle there. Right. Professional ranks is like... Like icing um, on the cake, pretty much. Icing on the cake, basically. Um, I mean, there's many fighters who stay in the amateurs and they can make a good living staying in the amateurs, not making no money off fighting, but making money off sponsors and stuff like that. Because it's mm -hmm. literally... And you even see some in some countries where they encourage fighters not to go professional. They encourage them to stay amateur and win things as an amateur. And that's why you see in Europe, you have guys who are double Olympic gold medal or two, three Olympics they've gone to or stuff like that. Vojic is one of them. He's come through that system. So one thing you have to understand is when he turned professional, he was already in boxing for a good 15 years. Mm. So he's already achieved the pinnacle. He's already achieved the highest thing he could really achieve because he's gone to the Olympics. He didn't win gold. He won bronze, but he already went to the Olympics. And he went to the Olympics and only lost one fight. And he lost the fight to the guy who ended up winning gold. I can't remember the guy's name. Mm. But me personally... When he went, um, when he did eventually turn professional, you will obviously know this. It took him a long time before he got the notice at the top, at the top level. Um, he was Adonis Stevenson's mandatory for God knows how long, for maybe two <laughs> or three months before he even got right. an opportunity. And when he did fight Adonis Stevenson, he ended up retiring him. And I think what people do need to remember is when. He won the world championship. It's like, what else is there left to achieve in boxing? So I personally believe, this is off my personal um, thought, 
not outside information. I personally believe that when he was fighting, it's like, I don't need anything else. I think retirement would have been in his mind from Adonis Stevenson ages, over the Adonis Stevenson time. And after that, and then he fought Arthur Baturbiev, I felt like, a lo- you know, because you was in the build-up, a lot of that build-up was based on their amateur fight, was based on the fact that he lost to him in the amateurs, and to me, it was still trying, it was still like Russia versus Ukraine. It was still right. a bit of right. um, country politics. With me, certain fighters have certain level, need certain level of inspiration. They have certain incentives. He achieved everything. So when he fought Arthur Baturbiev, I literally feel like um, this is it. I feel like it was a it was, this is it kind of fight. You know, I'm representing my country again at the final stage. When he lost and he lost in the fashion that he lost, I feel like um, Max Kellerman put up as well after the fight. You reach a time in a fight where you do self-reflection and everybody saw Volzik's will get broken in that fight. And as a man, you have to do self-reflection after that because you will, you've you been absolutely, what's the word? In front of everyone, you've been demasculated because you're a fighter and he's just been destroyed. It. And I personally believe, and this is my feeling, I feel like he didn't want to go through that experience again. And to top it up, and this is where I say I got the in, the in, in, the insight. I was for, I follow um, Volzik on Instagram, so he's been training throughout the whole of lockdown. So he's still been in camp, he's still been in training. But since he's been since he's lost to Baturbia, it's been radio silence. That fight was in October. He's literally had no form of fighting. And me personally, I felt like he mentally told himself he was going to retire before, like before, um, bef- like before lockdown, before he even decided and officially came out. I personally feel like he was already a retired fighter. Like he, if you look at his Instagram and you look at his pages, he's been investing a lot of time in things outside of boxing. So I feel like he's already, he's already built like, He's already been at the pinnacle. He's already achieved everything. So I feel right. like it was just the right time to announce it. But I feel like it's already been in his mind for a good year and a half, maybe even two. Uh, you personally, as a fan, do you feel like he retired too early? Even though he's 33, he only had like 18 fights. What did you say, Terry? I said, as a fan, do you feel like uh, Volzdig, um retired too early? Not only because of age, but because of um, he's only had like 18, 19 fights in his career. Yeah, I mean, a lot of those Europeans don't get a lot of fights. You know, they're not like Mexicans, you go in quite early. Um, but I think he had a. I mean, as a, from a selfish perspective, yes. From a selfish perspective, I feel like there's a lot of fights I would have loved to see him in. I would have loved to see him in against Bivol. I would have loved to see him in against Kovalev. would have loved to see him against Ramirez. You know, there's a lot of fight, fights I would have loved to see him in. But, and from a career perspective, I still think he had a lot in the tank. But I feel like he knew he was never going to beat Baturbia. He beat you in the amateurs and he, he, he knocked you out in the amateurs. He knocked you out in the pros. You know, for the rest of his career, this, you're forgetting this guy's a top level athlete. For his whole entire life, he's been an elite athlete. To know that you're inadequate or you're, you, you're not better than an individual, that's a humbling experience. And he would have had to live the rest of his career knowing that he's not good enough to beat another individual in his weight class. And that's, that means one or two things. Either you move up or move down a weight, or you just beat everybody else and be happy being second fiddle. I don't think he was willing to do neither. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's some real heavy stuff you just gave to the people i actually do have a little story i've never actually told you this story and it's the first time i'm telling it to anybody but arthur baturbiev and um always in the bulls that was in my city of philly now um i actually went to uh baturbiev's um meet and greet in philly and I never talked about the buzz 
in the room, like during that meet and greet. Um, this was around a couple of couple of boxing people um, behind the scenes, and I had more than a couple of people say, "Vozdik will never forget the power that he felt in the amateurs." And he's not going to be able to that in his brain. You never what? I said, he'll never... F I was I was told by several people at the Baturbiev meet and greet that Vozdik would... He, he will never forget the power that he felt in the amateurs. And when yeah. the going gets tough, he's going to remind himself of that power and he's going to check out. That's what Baturbiev and his people were banking on. They told me that at the meet and greet, prior to the weigh-in, prior to the fight. And I know I said before the fight, I said I like Baturbiev in the fight. I was like, the power, eventually he's going to he's gonna get to him. And I think you said the same thing. Yeah. And um, I think everybody, I feel like every fighter has a kryptonite. Everybody has one fighter that's just going to get them hell, or is this a fighter that they just can't beat? And I just feel like Baturbiev is that guy for Vozdik. Um Now, what I heard was that he was retiring to explore business ventures, and then I also heard he was um, retiring uh, for other reasons, and I just didn't, I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. You know, period. Um, from what you said, it sounds correct. It sounds correct. Um, a lot of European guys, their amateur career is their career. And the pros is just icing on the cake. But Vozdik went into that fight against Baturbiev and he put his all into it. Yep. Teddy Atlas put him through hell in training camp. I know that for a fact. He put him through hell in training camp. He trained very hard for that fight, mentally, physically. And he didn't start breaking down until about maybe, what, you say about, what, like the fifth round? Yeah, fifth like, or sixth round. Maybe fifth or sixth round. Fourth, fifth round in that fight, he started to physically break down. And one thing about boxing, you can physically start breaking down but not show it in your face. You but, can you can physically break down and still win rounds. Exactly. He was physically getting broken down and you could see it in his face. And um you know, that might have been that fight was probably just the end all be all. It was just like, okay, I'm either gonna unify the division right now or I'm gonna be happy with, you know, what? how things is going with my career. Um, I think another factor was how he how he lost, how he exactly. lost. Exactly, that that's the most important thing. Everybody saw his will broken, as you said. He put his all into that fight, and nobody can say that he left that fight where he left it, left some part of himself in the changing room. He yeah. put all of it into the ring, and he left with everything into the ring. He... And to me, that's so humbling to know that you've done that, and right. the guy just. Walk through you so easy. Like yeah. it wasn't even hard for Kotobi. Yeah, he he left everything in the ring that night, and I probably was one of the few people to actually report that. I was one of the first people to report that he actually didn't. He had to go to the hospital after the fight, and he didn't get out till Sunday. Yeah. That fight was on a Friday night. He didn't get out of the hospital yeah. until <laughs> Sunday afternoon. Um, so he definitely had some physical physical issues. Um with him but boxing is so cruel it's so brutal um these guys go through so much and um for the little bit of fights that he had he made such a huge impact just on the sport of boxing um i love skilled big men like i it's one thing to watch smaller fighters but there's nothing like seeing a guy that's heavily skilled at a higher weight. Guys is Literally. 160, 168, 175, cruiser weight. Like that range between 160 and cruiser weight. When you see a big guy doing things that a guy 122, 126 is doing, 
I get excited when I see that just as a boxing purist. Like, nothing makes me happier than seeing a, a guy that's, you know, like just physically imposing, but he just has the skills of a small guy. Like, it's, and that's what Volsdig represented. Um, Can I, I'm going to add a fact to this. I'm going to add a fact to this. I feel like what we also need to remember is the fact that he would have psychologically been affected by the fact that he put Adonis Stevenson into a coma. Right, and I think that has something to do with it as well. It, because I feel like it's not going to be one thing that's going to be going to lead for him to retire because it's a drastic decision. It has to be a combination. Maybe well, he did have businesses on the side. Maybe he did have all of these uh, injury. Maybe he did. Maybe they were all cumulative things. Well, but me personally, psychologically, something would have had to go into his mind from the beginning to even have that thought to retire well let me throw this your way how many fighters do you know actually put somebody into retirement and then turned around and they were put in the position of where they got put into retirement not many fighters is going through that you know what i'm saying no. like not many fighters is going but through that I so the fact that he lost the baturbiev and the amateurs via knockout then he had to go through the whole Adonis Stevenson situation. And then he got the same fate again. That's triple. Like, that's triple. And I, I do think for some people that's enough to retire. And you could tell the type of person he is because he could have easily just came back to boxing and made a couple million dollars and, and been cool. But you can see that it's bigger than that with um Yeah, with Nick, Nick, love, it. love is about pride. Love is yeah. about, like... Macho. I think it's pride, but then he's also conscious of family, his own health, um, his legacy, and things like that. And I don't care who you are, whether you're an athlete or not, when you look in the mirror, when you're trying to leave something, if you look in the mirror and you know in your heart that you've done everything that you could to try to succeed, you're able to walk away and not look back. You know, so hopefully, um, I don't even want to see Vols that come back. I, I don't even want to no, see him come not. back because I. It just seemed like it's just because it's not gonna be the same voice that you know what I mean? No, mentally and I'm so glad you brought that up. Mentally, I feel like what we've just seen from Volta is a person who's he as you said, he was in the hospital for two days and unlike Adonis Stevenson, he was able to leave with his senses still intact, he's still himself. Right. I don't care who you are, when you've gone through the humbling experience, it changes you. It either changes you for the worse or it changes you for the better. With right. him and knowing what he's achieved in his career, it can only change him for the worse. Because right. what's he fighting? He's made money, he's won titles, he's, he's, he's been at the top of the sport. What is he? What else is he fighting for? Right. And it's, it's only I mean, gonna be yeah, it's easy to just... Um go in against lower level guys but you see it's you know it's bigger for um Vols Dick but he's had a great um just overall career with the European guys you gotta factor in the amateur career and the pro career and people don't realize there is a major transition between amateur and pro. Like Literally. it's completely he's got a different. Good win over him. He's got a good win in the amateurs. Well he beat Vivo in the amateurs. I don't know if you know that he beat Vivo in the amateurs. Yeah. Yeah, that just goes to show how good he is because Bivol is one of the best. Well, I think he's the best pure boxer in the sport. You know what I'm saying? Just all around, just skill level. I think he's tech, he's the most technically sound fighter in the sport, point blank period, even more than uh, Lomachenko. And we've said that over a year ago. You know what yeah, I'm literally, saying? Literally. But for him to beat Bivol in the amateurs and for him to do what he's done in his career – uh, salute to Alexander Volsdick. Um, you got any closing thoughts? No, no, I mean, obviously, I hope whatever he decides to do is just he's happy with it and he's happy with his career because he's done, he put on good nights and he's entertained me. I, I definitely say that. Obviously, when good fighters I like retire, it's like a bereavement, you know, it's like someone died or something. Because to me, yes. it's like it's sad. Person, yeah, it's Personality. real sad. It's no longer there anymore. Right, right. Um, it's almost like a, a yeah, like a legend and passed away or something, man. Like it's yeah. it's crazy. You know what I mean? But um 
hopefully, um, you know, we can hopefully one day we'll get a chance to talk to him. Um, yeah, definitely. Actually, do a um like a joint interview with him. I think that'd be. That when this goes really out, dope. I'll try to send Instagram see what he responds. If maybe he doesn't respond at all. Say it again. I think when this goes out, I'll send it to him on Instagram and see if he responds. Yeah, I that would be a really really good um interview because I I think we could just cover everything like pre pros and and what he went through in the pros talk about adonis and and you know all of that i think that'll be really dope but um vp shane i appreciate you stopping through man giving people insight on alexander volzdick uh one of the best uh 175 pounders i've personally seen um inside of the ring when it comes just skill for skill you know what i mean Uh, nothing else involved just skill for skill so again, Shane, we appreciate you stopping through. And Alexander Volzdick, if you are listening, VP Shane and G5 Jeff TV would love to interview you and just talk about your career and just talk some boxing. But on behalf of G5 Jeff TV and VP Shane, we are out.